Hi everyone, it's Laura here and today I'm back to share with you two cards that I created with the scrapbook.com floral sampler pack digital cut file. This file is actually a freebie on scrapbook.com for World Card Making Day and today actually kicks off a week full of discounts and freebies on the scrapbook.com store and you will find all the links and the details in the description box down below. But now let's have a look at the card and how to use the cut file. Basically what you will get is a zip folder and I have already gone ahead and extracted mine and when you open it you will find several folders inside. So first of all we have a macOS folder and one for Windows which is what I'm going to use because that's the computer I have. And then we have a folder with designs for cards, one for planners and travel notebooks, one for pocket cards and one for scrapbooks. And I'm going here to show you just a few of these really pretty designs that you get. There are many more in the zip folder that you will get and they all have this kind of floral pattern. That cut file that I just showed you was the one that I'll be using for my card. And this one here will cut a card front with a score line in the middle. Then I'm going to show you a few of the designs in the planner and travel notebook folder. I find this really, really pretty. You see you have one with the sentiment high and one without it. So you can really use this in many different ways and on a huge variety of projects. And obviously nothing stops you from using, for example, the pocket card designs on your handmade greeting cards, which is something I'm planning to do, but that's for another day. Anyway, now that we had a little bit of a look at the different cut files, it's time to see how we can use them together with a Brother Scan and Cut Machine. These are SVG files and the scan and cut machine doesn't read them natively. So we are going to have to use the Canvas Workspace. This is a free software that you can download from the Brother website. I will have a link in the description box down below. And the first thing we're going to do is to click File and Import from Computer. I'm sorry, my interface is in Italian, but that's all it says. And then we're going to select a file we want to work with. And today I'm going to work with the design that is supposed to be used for cards. So I'm going to import it and here you can see it. You have basically a drawing of your mat, of your cutting mat. So you can position the cut file however you want or wherever you want on the mat. I'm leaving a little bit of a margin and I'm also going to import this file a second time because I'm going to be creating two cards today. I'm going to position that two at a bit of a distance from the first one so that I have enough space for my cardstock and enough margin to work with. And the next step is to export the file. So I'm going to click on file and then I'm going to go down to export FCM file. I'm going to rename my file to basically have the same name of the original SPG file. So it's going to be floralcardfront.fcm and I'm going to just export it on my computer. My scan and cut machine model is the CM600 and it doesn't support wireless connectivity uh, as is. So I'm going to just copy this file over on a USB stick and I'm going to use that to load the design on my machine later on. But before that, I wanted to prepare one of the panels that I'll be using for my cards. So I have some Bristol Smooth cardstock cut to four and three quarter by six inches on my desk. And I also off camera trimmed down some black cardstock to the same size. The card design that I'll be using with my cut file is going to cut a panel that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So the standard A2 size. And so I trimmed down my panels to be half an inch larger on both sides compared to the size of the cut file so that I have a little bit of margin to play with. The nice thing about using that canvas workspace is that you can actually see the grid on the mat. So that will help you once you go ahead and put your cardstock on the mat so you know where you have to stick it down. 
But anyway, coming back to what I'm doing right now, I am doing some quicking blending. This is a bit of a modified rainbow, starting from orange, moving to pink, then a lilac and finally a light blue. And I'm blending my Distress Inks using some foam blenders. The colors I picked are Dried Marigold, Worn Lipstick, Shaded Lilac and Tumbled Glass. And you can see I am blending them at an angle to create a little bit more interest on the final cards. As always, when using Distress Inks, I am blending with circular motions and I am starting from the edges of the cardstock and moving inwards. I am trying to get a smooth enough blend, but I'm not extremely concerned with it because in the end, once we cut everything out and once we add the water droplets, that's what I'm doing right now, we will not notice that too much. All right, so my panel is ready and it's time to move close to my brother's can and cut machine. And the first thing I'm going to do is to insert the USB stick on the slot, which is on the right side of the machine, so that I can then turn it on and load the pattern. And here I just wanted to show you a close up of the screen so that you can see what I'm doing. The machine is loading and then we are going to press that little play button so that we can skip over these introduction graphics and open the menu of the machine. There is a warning that we're going to skip about the position of the mat. And then I'm going to select pattern, saved data. I'm using the little pen that comes with the machine. I'm going to click on the little USB logo and here I have my design. I'm going to press OK to load it into my machine. And because I don't want to add anything else, I'm going to press OK. I hadn't loaded my mat yet, so it was time to do that at this stage. And then I can click that cut button on the interface that I showed you before. And the brother's Canon cut machine is going to start cutting everything for me. And although I have to say that it is pretty mesmerizing to sit and watch the brother's Canon cut machine doing all the cutting, I'm not going to put you through that. I just wanted to remind you that this cut file is a freebie for World Card Making Day on the scrapbook.com store. There will be sales going on throughout the whole week and I will have all the important links in the description box down below, so make sure to check that out. If you're interested, you can also subscribe to my newsletter because I will be sending out blog updates, YouTube channel updates, and sales updates too, including the ones related to World Car Making Day on scrubboot.com. And again, you will have a link to that in the description box down below too, if you're interested. It is basically another way for me to connect with you guys and let you know what's going on with my crafty life. All right, so once the cutting is done, we can go ahead and unload the mat. And then I'm going to show you a little trick that I used to make the assembling of the cards really easy. Here, I just wanted to show you the cut pattern on the paper. It's pretty visible on the black cardstock, not so much on the other side, but it got cut with a lot of accuracy. And I think this design is really, really pretty. And because the look I was going for is basically an inlaid die cutting type of look, but with these cutout files, what I did is I carefully lifted off only the external part of the cutouts. And I'm trying my best to leave all the small pieces exactly where they are so that that acts as a guide once I go ahead and start adhering everything in place. And I'm going to swap things around. So I'm going to fill in the black frame with the colorful cutouts. And I'm going to fill in the colorful frame with the black cutouts. The black cardstock was a little bit thicker than the Strathmore Bristol Smooth that I used. So it was slightly more challenging to lift it off, but in the end it worked out pretty nicely. And this colorful one instead was just a piece of cake. You can see I could lift it very effortlessly and everything stayed exactly where it was. Well, except for this one little cutout. 
So now I can go back to my desk where I have two card bases cut at four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored at five and a half inches so that I have two top folding A2 card bases. And I'm going to start by first gluing the two frames. I'm using Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive so that I can position everything exactly as I want. I have a little bit of wiggle room and I'm going to first adhere the black frame and then the colorful one. And honestly, especially with the Distress Inked panel, you can just leave the card as is and it would be ready. I think it's already very beautiful, but as I said, I wanted to take things a step further. So I went ahead and I started adding some glue to my card base and then I'm going to nest in all those smaller cutouts. This didn't take very much time at all. It takes a little bit of patience, but it's pretty straightforward, especially because we used that little trick and we left all the cutouts in place on the mat. I have it on the side of my desk, it's not shown here, but it's basically in the same state that you saw it before, where I have the internal part of the design basically reproduced there with all these smaller cutouts. And it turns out that this is actually pretty relaxing if you play some music in the background or an episode of your favorite TV show. And once you're done gluing, this is what the card will look like. I left the sentiment last and I decided to spice things up a little bit by raising the letters on some foam squares. I'm creating a little bit of interest and dimension this way and I always like adding these smaller touches. I skipped over the part when I glued all the other cutouts in the card with the black frame and also in this case I adhered the sentiment raising it over some foam squares. I think both cards are really, really beautiful and I really like it when with, you know, one sitting at your desk, you manage to create multiple projects. It's pretty nice and effective and also a lot of fun. If you follow me, you know by now that I like adding finishing touches and I couldn't stay away from a little bit of glitter on the sentiment only that I added with a Spectrum Noir Clear Overlay Pen. It's especially stunning on that black cardstock and you can see it on camera as well. And then my beloved glossy accents had to be included in these cards, so I used them to coat the entire sentiment. They look a little bit milky right now, but when they dry, they will dry clear and add this glossy and shiny finish to the sentiment, which will make it really stand out compared to the rest of the elements on the cards. And my final tip for today is that if you have any air bubbles in your glossy accents, you can use a pin, this is just a sewing pin, to burst them and get rid of them. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's inspiration with the scrapbook.com digital cut file, which is a freebie for World Card Making Day. Make sure to check out the description box down below for all the details and all the links to the freebie and the sales on scrapbook.com and also for a link to my blog where you will find more pictures of these projects. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and to let me know in the comments down below which card was your favorite and if you own or plan to get an electronic cutting machine. As always, thank you all so much for stopping by and for watching my videos and I wish you all a great day.